Hello, good morning and welcome to Thoughts and Updates for this week. Each week I have been taking myself down the next part of the trail and the Kirkintillich and Waterside Trail is designed by Eastern Bartonshire Council looking at our history and particularly the history of the local area in which I live <clears throat> in order to see if there's any kind of learning or anything to come from the past which is a particular interest of mine because um, I studied history uh, when I was at university and I've always believed that those who forget the lessons of the past are indeed condemned to repeat them. So last week I was at the Soapery which is just along the road there and now I'm here which is just above the Luggy which is a, a local kind of burn stream river call it what you will. Um, I'm not uh, technically aware of what it would actually be but it's a waterway and I believe I'm at the site of the Lion Foundry. Now Kirkintillich sits um, on the waterway, the canal, which was built in the 18th century, thus allowing raw material to come in to the place and finished product to go out, although it didn't go by the canal, it went by the railways that were built and a couple of weeks ago I was at where I believe is the site of one of the stations that were here but also it is the walkway now where it follows the railway path all the way out to Lennox Town. So what we have here is I believe housing behind me which was uh, replacing the, the foundry which was closed in 1984, the Lion Foundry and a few weeks ago I was standing next to a telephone box which the K6 and K8 design were two designs that the Lion Foundry and Kirkintilk were responsible for which went all over the United Kingdom, those red phone boxes and I'm going to presume just along here um, that we also have the casting of a post box so the red pillar post boxes may well also have been from the Lion Foundry, they're of the same material, the same design and uh, indeed of the same quality. So that was not just the Lion Foundry, I believe that there's still a foundry in Kirkintillich, it is the Archibald Young Limited Foundry which opened actually in 1959 so it's just a few years older than me um, and set up by uh, Archibald Young himself uh, who was a manager of a foundry and then set up in his own business but the the famous one here would have been the Lion Foundry for all that all those castings um, <coughs> so in would come the raw materials the people in Kirkintillich would be uh, employed in order to develop those materials into something that was sellable and off it went on the railway to be sold on which is just how industry works things come in you change them you send about now i'm very delighted to see a number of people uh, making comments down below which is great and if you want to pass this on to people to subscribe please do um and the more the merrier and i'm delighted to see rose cairns a former uh, colleague and student of mine come in and uh, go back and look at some of the previous ones that I've done and make comment which is fantastic thank you very much Rose and to answer um, and I will answer in more detail in written form something that <coughs> she asked me about masks and about the wearing of them I think it's irrefutable that the wearing of masks is part of the reason why we have less deaths and less infections than we had previously. I've done my research, I have looked at studies, I have talked to people who were affected by uh, coronavirus and also talked to people who have been frontline in terms of dealing with it. Do I think that it stops it? No I don't. Do I think that it stops you breathing? No I don't. Do I think that there is a medical reason as to why people shouldn't wear them? I believe there is. I think that there is however medical doubt over that. Have I looked into what particular studies are telling us with regards to the masks? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I find unfortunate and I, I struggle with are the number of people who are against the vaccine, who are against the masks and so on, and they tend to use single-use studies. Um, it's one of the things that I had with regards to the vitamin B injections and, you know, how we needed to look not at this vitamin but look at it as a hormone and so on and the studies that had been um, held looking into this were minimal and the evidence was minimal 
So I'm open to that challenge. Absolutely, I don't want anybody to be anything else than a free thinker. And I do want people to do their own research. But the problem I have, and I'll give you an anecdote, an example of how dangerous it can be, is that people tend to hold on to something. I'll give you uh, one of the things I was thinking about. Russell Brand is somebody that I have a great deal of uh, love for. Not just because he's a fellow addict, but also because I think that he is an enterprising gentleman who has put himself out there as being a sceptic on all things sceptical. So when he produces material which is challenging the mainstream media and challenging people to put up their kind of evidence, I think that's just a fantastic thing. I don't always agree with him. In fact, sometimes I think that what he tends to do is to be all about the mainstream media and not necessarily about the non-mainstream media, which can equally be as difficult to uh, police and to legislate for and to regulate because some of the misinformation they put out, because anybody can put out misinformation on the internet, there's no way that you can stop them, is exceptionally dangerous. And here's the reason why. Where I work, we had a number of people who decided they weren't getting vaccinated. It was down to one individual who was a very strong advocate of non-vaccination. And it led to an entire group uh, deciding that they were going to take the morally right stance, they felt, of not being vaccinated because they didn't feel that they had been given the right information. Now, I don't know whether they had gone and looked. I don't know if they'd done their research. I just know that that was the decision they took. When that strong individual ended up in hospital, when all of his um, very well-meaning, well-thought-through opinions ended up with him nearly losing his life, then I believe there was a cure people for a vaccine within a very short period of time. And it's that evidence, it's listening to the likes of Rachel Bradford telling people publicly that without the vaccine, her husband would have lost his life. It's listening to Dr. Roddy Nielsen, who challenged people on my Facebook page over their belief that wearing masks or having the vaccine was just an absolute utter nonsense. And as a consultant haematologist with connections, people on his Facebook page who then came in, who are breathing specialists, to tell those on Facebook that what they were peddling was nonsense and dangerous convinced me that the way out of this is not to find a panacea for all ill. We're not going to find the absolute cure. What we're going to have to do is to engage with measures. Now if wearing a mask means that I protect people in Sainsbury's, which I'm going to go to now, means that I protect people in public places who are ushers in theatres, ushers in cinemas, shop assistants, by minimising the risks that they are exposed to, I'll do it without thinking. I have got no issue, no difficulty whatsoever. And yes, I see people dropping the mask. It's not about protecting you all the time. It's often about protecting all of us. And I say that with my stepdaughter currently in bed, suffering from coronavirus. Hopefully, a mild dose. So, next time, I don't think it's going to be quite as leafy a suburb, but until then, it's bye for now.